We all love dive watches, myself included. But most of us know we don't need them. We just think they're cool and that high water resistance rating makes them feel nearly indestructible, which makes them great everyday watches. But what if you don't like dive bezels or you just want something that looks a little less sporty, is meant for both land and sea, and still maintains a water resistance rating that you'll probably never come remotely close to needing. There's quite a few non-diver stainless steel sports options out there from all the big brands, but here's a very popular one from Omega. It's the Seamaster Aquaterra, and no, I didn't go in the water with it, it's way too cold this time of year, but I did hang out near the ocean and I shot a little hoops at a court overlooking the Pacific. Close enough, right? Omega's Seamaster line consists of the standard, iconic Seamaster Diver 300M, the Planet Ocean Diver that's a bit more hardcore and can go even deeper underwater, and the Aquaterra, which was initially released back in 2002. While the first two could support your diving needs, the latter cannot. Yeah, it's rated to have 150 meters of water resistance, but it lacks a dive bezel, which you'd probably need to time your dives. It's good for, you know, staying alive and all that. The Aquaterra is one of those jack-of-all-trades watches. You like riding boats, chilling at the beach, or sipping a pina colada at the pool? Well, it's water-resistant enough to have you covered. Want to look extra spiffy at your new professional job? The Aquaterra looks just as good at the office as it does paired with your favorite swim trunks. It's quite the versatile watch meant to appeal to a lot of people. And if you don't like this specific model of the Aquaterra, then I wouldn't worry too much. Omega has a staggering 260 variations listed on their website. They come in a handful of sizes and a wide array of color options. In fact, if you consider the entire Omega catalog, they have a total of 1,666 different watch SKUs listed on their site, from what I counted at least. That is insane. They have an option for almost every segment of the watch market. The Omega brand is absolutely huge, but enough of this digression, let's talk about this specific Aquaterra model. This one is the 38 millimeter version and comes on a stainless steel bracelet with a butterfly clasp. It's only 12.2 millimeters thick, measures just 44 millimeters lug to lug, and Omega lists it for $5,700, which isn't bad compared to its competition. The 36 millimeter Rolex Oyster Perpetual, for example, will set you back $6,100 retail. I like this size on my 7.25 inch wrist, but if you think it's too small, Omega has a 41 millimeter version that looks almost identical at the exact same price. See, Omega has an option for you. The iridescent blue dial is thoughtfully designed. It has what Omega calls a teak pattern, and it was made to emulate the wooden teak decks you'd find on a sailboat or a yacht. I've been on neither, but I've seen enough on television and film to instantly recognize the inspiration. It's nicely executed. The dial also has a subtle sunburst pattern that adds even more visual flair to the mix. The loomed hour indices are all applied and remind me of little shark teeth, while the minute hand is loomed at the arrow tip and the hour hand is loomed at its center axis. There's also a date window at the 6 o'clock position, which I'm sure all you symmetry fanatics will love. I had zero complaints about the 38mm case because it looked great and felt great on my wrist. Omega's DNA is definitely present here through the liar lugs that look reminiscent of what you'd find on the Speedmaster and the Seamaster Diver 300M. It's a cool look that Omega has been doing pretty well for years. It also has a see-through case back where you'll find Omega's Metas Verified Master Chronometer Caliber 8800. It's automatic with their own coaxial escapement, has a free-sprung balance wheel as well as a silicone balance spring, beats at 3.5 Hz, and has a 55-hour power reserve. While 55 hours doesn't bother me in the least, it is a bit lower than its competitors which mainly hover around 70 hours. 
It was also extremely accurate, only gaining about two seconds per day during my week with it. Other than that, you're getting a whole lot of movement at a fairly reasonable price for its segment. It's also nicely finished when compared to other sports watches in its price range. One point of contention for me was the bracelet. I liked the simple three link style, and I also didn't mind the polished center links that looked great on the one that I borrowed, but I know will eventually become a cloud of scratches. Some people like that and think it adds character, but that's for you to decide. What oddly bothered me was the low profile butterfly clasp. It was easy to handle and felt secure, but it wore really flat on the underside of my wrist. Most watches that I've owned or tried have decently curved clasps that are more rounded and formed my wrist nicely. The Aquaterra's was just so flat and long. It wore comfortably, but every time I twisted my wrist to look at the clasp, the flatness just looked off to me. This was just my minor gripe that I assume some might not even notice or care about. I highly recommend you trying it out for yourself. So as I said before, there are a lot of Aquaterra variations. I can't help but think of them as a direct competitor to Rolex's Oyster Perpetual and kinda to the Datejust. The Crowns had the non-diver stainless steel sports segment on lock for decades, and just a few years ago, they released a handful of colorful options for the OP that were fun and considered daring for Rolex. Not to mention they were a smash hit and were nearly impossible to get from authorized dealers. For me at least, I actually tried to get one. Almost two years later, Omega released their own colorful versions of the Aquaterra in what appeared to be a direct response to Rolex's releases. There are no way copies, and Omega did an excellent job of creating something that's still very much their own watch, but still meant to compete with Rolex's new offer. They also undercut the OP in price and are much easier to find at authorized dealers. My colleague James Stacy described it as similar cuisine, but a different recipe, and I couldn't agree more. Whatever the case may be, you have plenty of options if you're looking for a non-diver stainless steel sports watch options from other brands, and quite a few from within the Aquaterra line alone. This 38mm version has a great movement, can withstand almost any water activity thrown its way, and has a distinct case and dial that boasts excellent finishing and is attractive. With its broad appeal and nearly endless variations, the Aquaterra is no doubt a great option for almost anyone on the hunt for a watch that can do almost anything.